on page 141, the compensation we receive does not create the agency. The fact you are getting paid is not what is creating the agency. The fact you are getting paid is a bonus to this agency. You can actually work for free. It is called a gratis agent or gratuitous. Have you guys ever heard of an attorney doing pro bono work? Attorneys will do pro bono, meaning free, to certain clients as a goodwill gesture to their neighborhood. If an attorney does pro bono work, he cannot stand in front of the judge and say, well, your honor, he didn't pay me, so I was only half an attorney. The judge is going to go, no, it's not. You chose to be in his attorney. Whether you get paid or not, it's irrelevant. You must be 100% attorney. Give him the same services that you would give a paying customer. The same is true with us. You can, in theory, list your mother's house for free. But you have to be an agent. You have to be a full agent. You cannot stand in front of a judge and go, well, I didn't get a commission on that, so I only did half of a CMA. No, you chose to be your agent. Being paid is not the determining factor. Compensation does not create agency. The fact you chose to sign the listing agreement creates the agency getting paid is a bonus to that agency so you can work for free if you do you are still required to give the same service to a free client that you would a charging client because money has nothing to do with it thumbs up all right so now let's talk about this thing that we have been bantering around a couple different times here. Your fiduciary responsibilities, there are six of them. Okay, where'd that go? This book loves its anagrams. Is that right or is it an Yeah, I think so. There are six responsibilities that we incur. This is where the difference changes between Peyton Manning's agent, Britney Spears's agent, a mortgage broker's agency, and us. We have six. They are care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, and confidentiality. These are the six fiduciary responsibilities that we owe, all right? They spell out, as you can see, cold AC, cold AC. That, are, that is our six responsibilities that we owe a client. Whether it's express or implied, we still owe the client that, okay? So let's talk about these six responsibilities. Care is the first one. Care. You must exercise reasonable skill and care to make sure your client does not get harmed. That could be physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, any of it. Matter of fact, to take the sidebar, right now there is an issue that is being discussed in the real estate world. This whole showing of homes 
inside of this coronavirus issue that we're having currently. We are supposed to exercise care to our client. The Modulin Group has come out with an edict on how now our agents should show a home. For instance, we don't shake hands with our clients currently. We don't get closer than six feet. Our client is not to touch any surface in the property. As the agent, we will open the doors, we'll open the closets. Our clients are not supposed to touch anything. We are exercising care the best we can to make sure our client in this particular case doesn't get physically harmed through a virus, all right? The most common time you see this, and there have been several lawsuits, so that should perk, you, perk your ears up a little bit, where a listing agent told their seller, hey, the price of the house is 140, and it should have been 160. The agent did their CMA wrong, and the seller has actually sued their own agent because you left money on the table. You told me 140, should have been 160. I got cheated out of 20 grand. So there have been several of those lawsuits. So you must exercise reasonable skill and care to make sure your client does not get harmed. That's our first one, care. Obedience, you must do what your client says to do. Unless, unless it's illegal, unethical, or immoral. And those last two are on you guys, all right? So if your client says, I don't wanna show the house Saturday because I've got my mother-in-law coming in, you would say, okay, we can block all showings on Saturday. That's a legal uh, request from your client. But they can't say something like, hey man, we've got lead-based paint, but don't tell anybody or we'll never get this sold. Can't do that. That's a federal law that we disclose it. So that would be an example of, I can't follow that command from you. That violates federal law, I can't do it. Someone could say, hey, I wanna sell my house, but I don't want you to sell it to any of those people. Uh, dude, I can't do that, that violates fair housing. You know, hey, don't sell it to the Martians, I don't like Martians. Sorry, that's a protected class, which we'll get to. That would be an example of, you can't follow that law either. But if they said, I'm going out of town this weekend, on a honeymoon, don't call me. I'll be back Monday. Don't call me this weekend. Okay, I can do that. That's the obedience portion. Loyalty. Your loyalty lies to your client above your own loyalty. You see this play out a lot of times when the buyer wants to see five houses. Remember that BAC we talked about, Sarah? And we said we give half of it away? I could decide to only give 10% away. So now when you're looking at these five listings and one of them says, I get 3%, I get 3%, I get 3%, and I get 1%. Which one do you think you're gonna take the, the client to first? Most humans would go, Oh, I'm going to take them to the one I get paid the most. No, the, the client's loyalty above yours. That client may look at that house and go, dude, that's the perfect house. I want that one. Even though it's only paying 1% to you. Okay, let's go look at it. Because his loyalty lies above yours. You have to do what's best for him, not you. <coughs> <clears throat> disclosure 
you must disclose everything you know about the deal. If I heard my buyer is looking at uh, Christina's listing, but I heard her sellers going into foreclosure because her neighbor's aunt's brother's cousin is my sister's best friend. I would tell my buyer, hey, dude, I heard through the grapevine that seller's going into foreclosure. Let's lowball him. He needs the money because that's something I know about the deal. All right. Now, you can't use that. Um, let's skip that for a second. We'll come back to that. So I have to disclose everything I know about the deal. If you work for the seller, you must also disclose all of the known defects in the property. You would disclose those up front. Come on in, bring your buyer. But I just want to tell you, apparently we've got a hole in the roof. Do you want to continue to negotiate? And you go, no, we're out. Okay, I just saved us both the time and the effort. Or you could say, yeah, my guy's a roofer. We're still interested. Okay, just wanted you to know. So as a listing agent, you must, under penalty of law, disclose all known defects. I know we got lead base paint. I know there's a hole in the roof. And I know that there's gophers out in the grass. I would disclose that to all the buyers prior to them coming in. That is to reduce you guys going and having a home inspection and wasting your money and finding out there's a hole in the roof and go, dude, why didn't you tell us? So part of the disclosure from the seller side is we must disclose all of the known defects. I also would disclose what I know about the buyer. Let's flip that scenario. Suppose I get an offer from Aaron and I know her buyer's in foreclosure. We may not accept that offer because we know she's got financial problems. I would tell my client, hey dude, I saw Aaron's client, the buyer. I saw their name in the newspaper. They're not gonna be around for more. So, we may not accept that offer. 